ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਰਜ਼ੇ ਦੇ ਬੋਝ ਹੇਠ ਦੱਬੇ ਹੋ ਸਮਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਕੀ ਕਰੋ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮਸ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਲਾਈਫ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਮਾੜਾ ਅਸਰ ਪਾ ਸਕਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਲ ਚ ਹੋ ਤਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕਰਜ਼ੇ ਨੂੰ ਵੱਧ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਘਟਾ ਕੇ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ ਰਕਮ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਟਰਸਟ ਫ੍ਰੀ ਕਿਸ਼ਤਾਂ ਚ ਬਦਲ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕਰਜ਼ੇ ਤੋਂ ਮੁਕਤ ਕਰਾ ਕੇ ਨਵੀਂ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਜੀਣ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ 18667908984 ਬਿਜ਼ਨਸ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨਸ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਪਰੇਸ਼ਾਨੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਥੀ ਬਹਾਈ ਫੇਦ ਦੇ ਸੰਬੰਧ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਹੈਰਲਡ ਰੋਜ਼ਨ ਜੋਹਨ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਕਿ ਕਿਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਬਿਲੀਵ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਵਨਸ ਆਫ ਗੋਡ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਖ ਮਕਸਦ ਇਹੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਚੰਗੇ ਡੀਡਸ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਰੱਬ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤੀ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੈਂ ਸਵਾਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਪੁੱਛੇ ਕਿ ਰੱਬ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਇਹ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਰੱਬ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤੀ ਹੋ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਸੇ ਸੰਬੰਧ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਓ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਰ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਲੈਣੇ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਹੈਰਲ ਰੋਜ਼ਨ ਤੋਂ ਵਾਂਸ ਅਗੇਨ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਬੈਕ ਗੁੱਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਸੋ ਐਸ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਟੈਲਿੰਗ ਟੈਲਿੰਗ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਦ ਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਥਾਟ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੀਵੈਲੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਸੇਮ ਚੈਲੰਜਸ ਵਿਚ ਅਦਰ ਰਿਲੀਜੀਅਨਸ ਆਰ ਆਲਸੋ ਫੇਸਿੰਗ ਦ ਬਹਾਈਜ਼ ਆਰ ਆਲਸੋ ਫੇਸਿੰਗ ਬਟ ਵੀ ਆਲਸੋ ਹੀਅਰ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਸੈਡ ਇਕੁਐਲਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਵਿਮਨ ਥੈਟਸ ਅ ਮੇਜਰ ਇਸ਼ੂ Uh, all across the world the statistics which are coming the way women are treated in every culture uh, so when you talk about equality of women in bahai faith if you could expand on that and let us know that how they are treated in the uh, temples or oh, first of all what is the place of worship where you go and pray and over there is there any segregation and are they allowed to intermingle and uh, pray and what what kind of activities do they perform yes places of worship Right now Baha'is are spread out all over the world and right. there's only a few temples. Mm -hmm. There So like you call we, them temples. We call them temples uh, or houses of worship. Right. And uh, they're they're large and they're they're major institutions with beautiful gardens and mm -hmm. they represent uh, the continent. Some day Baha'is believe there will be these temples in every locality in every village. Right. We're hoping mm -hmm. uh, and we're working for that. In terms of equality of women and men this is seen as one very important principle in uniting the world. Right. Half the human race uh has not had a, a you know sufficient rights mm -hmm. and recognition and um so uh Baha'is believe God has always taught us that mm -hmm. men and women were equal. Right. And uh we we haven't been able to implement that uh per, for perhaps historical and developmental reasons but now humanity is coming into a time when the equality of women and men will be easier to express okay. and and more essential to acknowledge women are seen as in some ways having special powers like to nurture to bring about peace mm -hmm. community uh, relations etc in addition to all the you know strengths uh, that that men have too right um so that that is one very important principle all the principles of the bahai faith sort of aim at uh, an ever advancing global civilization mm -hmm. that would bring prosperity peace and justice right and uh, so each principle serves that and that's one of them an important one okay and how important is education in your uh, faith very very important um it's it's believed that the whole heritage of humanity uh, belongs to each child mm -hmm. that's the child's right. right similar to what it says in the universal declaration of human rights So education is extremely important. Spiritual education for children, youth, for adults throughout their lifespan. Mhm. Mm in terms of practices, study is very important to us. Right. Study involves figuring out how to how to implement uh universal principles. It's it's one thing to learn about love and justice and wisdom and compassion. Right. And another thing to actually live it. So part of study to mm -hmm. us means figuring out ways to do that in a, in a regular way. Right. and as you said in iran when this uh, faith started uh, but we have also heard lot of persecution of the bahais in iran and pakistan also so if you could tell us a little bit about that how serious is that issue and how you are trying to uh, you know confront that religious persecution has you know marred human history and uh, each time a new religion comes along the previous religion has trouble accepting the new one right Um I guess that's happened uh, in India with Sikhs and it's happened uh, all over the world when new religions emerge. So Bahais are persecuted in Iran. Mhm. Mm uh that's going on and Bahais perceive this as a a violation of human rights. Right. Religious observance and expression is a, a universal human right. Mhm. Mm Bahais are forbidden to do much partisan uh, politicking. We're mm -hmm. not supposed to engage in aggressive kinds of protests. Right. But we are supposed to lift up universal principles like justice and international norms. Mhm. Mm and so, yes, there's some persecution in Iran and 
some persecution of Baha'is also in Egypt and a few other countries. Right. And um, are the Baha'is trying to bring this issue to the international community also? We try to do it in a very dignified way, right. just by you know writing letters to uh, uh, heads of state okay. and, and people who are responsible for human rights observance and right. just reminding people that this is a, belongs to all people. Right. Baha'is are also concerned with religious persecution generally. It isn't okay. only Baha'is who are persecuted, but that, that is part of what we need for, to have a, a, a prosperous and just uh, world family. Right. We have to observe universal human rights. Service is a very important organ of any faith. So in Baha'is, uh, but in many faiths we find that the emphasis is on serving their own communities or own yeah. people only. So what is the Baha'is perspective on this? This is a, a growing edge for us. Um, we're, we're relatively small, 7.3 Baha uh, million, million Baha'is spread out over two, in 200 countries, so mm -hmm. sort of spread thin around the world. So we do engage in what we call social and economic development. So these are humble little projects often, sometimes working on local poverty right. or sometimes uh, cleaning up the park or some, mm -hmm. something that uh, young people can do, um, you know, community gardens. Um, sometimes, um, sometimes art forms are developed, like that illustrate racism, um, where you can you know, use drama or right. music to to show, uh, to do some public education. Right. So all of those are rather humble okay. uh, service projects. Anytime you do interfaith cooperation right. or interagency cooperation, mm -hmm. or uh, caring for the earth in any way, this this counts as a social and economic uh, development project. Right. Baha'is are encouraged to do those in appropriate ways, small then leading to larger and larger enterprises. Okay, and when we talk about the demographics of the Baha'is, as you said, there are around seven million people all across the world, 200 countries. But uh, uh, where are, what is the basic kind of work they are doing? Are they like mostly educated farmers or service oriented? What is the basic uh, setup? Yes, uh, demographics of Baha'is. Um, I think it's similar with other new religions. Mm -hmm. New religions have a lot of inspiration and people are well, wed well, usually very well educated within them. So Baha'is tend to get very well educated. They do you know, things like uh, they're scientists and uh -huh. architects and sometimes work in agriculture. Right. Um, a lot of service agencies, a lot of teachers, mm -hmm. for example. Um, about two million Baha'is in India. Uh, about two million in Africa, about uh, two million in, in uh, South America, 300,000 mm -hmm. in Iran still, right. and about 300,000 in North America, mm -hmm. and about 300,000 in uh, Europe. Right. So they're spread in that, those directions. Right. Um, but demographics in terms, educational level usually pretty high because it's an important value. Right. And yes, so temples are beautiful. I happen to visit uh, the New Delhi temple, the Baha'i temple, and it's mm. really very nice. And I'm people envious. of all uh, religions are welcomed over there. That is the best yes. part which is there. So now let's talk a little bit about the core activities which the Baha'is do. So if you can take into that journey, Paul. Yes, <coughs> right now uh, the authority of the Baha'i faith is the Universal House of Justice, which is in, uh, Mount, on Mount Carmel in Israel, northern mm -hmm. Israel, the city of uh, Haifa. And we're being encouraged by the Universal House of Justice to engage in these core activities. So Baha'is all over the world are doing four things, essentially. Okay. We're educating children. Mm -hmm. We call those children's classes. Uh, another uh, emphasis is junior youth programs, as we were describing before. Right. A third is uh, what we call study circles for adults, okay. which are looking at the Word of God, look, studying scripture, learning how to implement that in our lives, express it in service. And the fourth area, so those are three educational areas, you might say, and the fourth is devotions, mm -hmm. which are often done in, in living rooms or sometimes in public venues. and. The, you invite as many people as want to come from whatever traditions mm -hmm. and uh, scriptures from all around the world. Right. Uh, prayers, readings, silence, music, chanting. That we call that devotions, and we, we like to believe that uh, each place where this devotions where devotions happen will someday evolve into one of these temples. But it's gradual. It's like a seed uh, becoming a mighty tree. Right. And do you also believe that is the Baha'i faith the only way to reach God, or you believe that other religions' practices, what they have, they can reach their God in whatever form of worship they are doing? That is a very important question in terms of interfaith relations. Mm -hmm. Baha'is believe that uh, God has given us uh, 
major revelations, but God also sends light into the world more diffusely than right. that. So everyone uh, should be respected, mm -hmm. even even non-believers. Right. Uh, everyone is a child of God. Everyone's in, in God's family. Right. Baha'is also believe that we should learn to investigate mm -hmm. revelations when they occur. Right. So humanity is should investigate major claims, uh, like the Baha'is claim that Baha'u'llah is the promised one of, of all ages and that other promised ones will come in the future. Right. And each faith makes claims like this. Their founder right. is someone special, a mediator uh. between humanity and God. So Baha'is uh, encourage people to investigate those claims, study but, them, look Right, at them. but do you believe that it's only through a mediator that you can reach God or a person can on his own develop those traits and reach God himself or herself? I'm going to interpret. Sure. I can't give an official Baha'i answer to that. Here's my understanding of that. It's a very important question. Um, so Baha'is would say we do best when we follow the mediator. Mm -hmm. We follow the guidance of the mediator. But right. God's revelation is more diffuse. It's right. light in the world. Mm -hmm. We have a conscience. We have a mind. We have a heart. We can see what other good people are doing. Right. We can learn in, in many, many ways. Science teaches us some things. Mm -hmm. All the disciplines teach us things. So, so Baha'is try to not be exclusive in right. their claims. And by exclusive, I mean saying there is only one way to God, and here it is, mm -hmm. and you must conform rigidly to, to this teaching. Right. So that's exclusivism, and Baha'is try to be very universal, and progressive and pluralistic and mm -hmm. accept that uh, there are many paths right but we should pay attention to the, the most recent guidance from God if we can find it great and towards the end uh, whatever we have discussed it's really interesting what you have told us anything else which you would like to tell to our viewers towards the end a very important teaching uh, of the Baha'i faith is the independent investigation of truth okay and the harmony of science and religion mm -hmm. and so I do a lot of interfaith work, and I see that that's, uh, there are non-religious people who mm -hmm. want to be part of interfaith dialogue because right. they have some of the same lofty aims as people who are religious. So Baha'is want to try to reach out and acknowledge everyone is free mm -hmm. and responsible to investigate truth, right. including the use of science, including the use of all of the other disciplines, learning about the other religions, all learning right. about world history learning from individuals that you meet. Every right. individual is a source of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and the harmony of science and religion w is saying basically we have invisible reality, we have physical reality. <laughs> Absolutely. Both. Well, this is a very important topic and uh, in the coming uh, months, you know, I would love to talk on this last point which you have talked about science and religion. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure having you. Good to be here. Thank you. So, today, Mr. Harold Rosen has given us a lot of knowledge about the Baha'i faith. We should know that our faith is the faith of the Baha'i faith. Because the purpose of the Baha'i faith is to believe in the Baha'i faith. We should make all of the Baha'i faith better. We should make all of the Baha'i faith better. We should make all of the Baha'i faith better. So, let's take a little break. But let's take a little break. 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 Let's take a little break.